Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. It's time for another episode of MacBreak Studio. And here we are in the studio with Mark Spencer hey, and our little friend, Mr. 7D. Mr. Sliders. Slider. Mr. Slider, Mr. yeah. Mr. Slider. So we're going to um, take a slight uh, divergence from our usual topic of Final Cut Pro 10 or Motion 5 and talk about production today. That's right. We recently had the opportunity to do um, several shooting days at a winery in Napa, right, in uh, September, October, and got some beautiful fall and harvest harvest activity. Really great stuff. And um, we, we shot uh, video, we shot stills, and we wanted to do some nice tracking shots. That's right. And uh, we, we got some equipment uh, from, from borrowlenses.com, and I got to mention borrowlenses.com because we use them uh, regularly for, for renting gear. For Excellent company, and they'll actually ship right to your door. L lenses, tripods, yeah. sliders, or, or you, you can pick up, there's actually a pickup pretty close to where I live in Mill Valley where I can just pick the stuff up and drop it off. But anything you want, it's right there. So we, we got like a Philip Bloom pocket dolly slider, pocket slider to try that out. Some different uh, handheld... Um, Rigs. Rigs for the DSLR, stuff that we don't necessarily use all the time, but sure. renting is perfect. The extra batteries and CF cards. But I also wanted to try um, building a slider. This is a do-it-yourself, a DIY slider kit, right? Yeah, there's a, it's a kit, um, and you, you get the different components um, uh, primarily from this place called Juiced, Juiced Link. Juiced Link. Yeah, Juiced, J-U-I-C-E-D, Juiced Link, L-I-N-K, I -I -N -K, think, dot com. Um, and Basically, I'll go over the components in a minute, but I want to show you. I want to show you guys what you can do with this thing. Because after building this, we we used it and we're really shocked oh, with the really results. Good, yeah. So so we're in Final Cut, and I'll just play this. These are some shots from the vineyard, and you can see here I've actually used this to do kind of a rising shot. So you don't you don't have to be uh, direct, directly flat. And here's another shot that's kind of an angle going by all the grapes uh, that were being picked that morning. Another little rising shot to reveal the vineyard. And here, there's a beautiful lake right on the vineyard, it's my right? A little, shot. yeah, I love that shot. And all the thing about this, it takes a little practice because it's not motorized, right? We're right. watching, we're we're getting this to work just by moving the uh, the camera along the track manually. Uh, but I here, this is another. This is really yeah, beautiful shot when, shot when the sun was coming down here. You said the other one was your favorite shot. Well, the, they're both your they're both favorite my shot. Favorites. Okay, yeah, they're both my favorite. This is my favorite. Like through just a little through the woods here, not really winery We're related, for a but troll to come running. Through yeah, there. I know it's kind of a mystery shot. It's beautiful, and this last one is looking down. Here we go into the barrels holding the grapes right after we poured in there, and the, and the the pressure of the grapes is starting to produce all this wine. And by the way, this shot here um, was a little tricky because we suspended we this suspended slider the camera over the wine yeah, vat upside down. Uh, across two tripods over this thing, and you know, if we were to screw up and drop the 7D, uh, my camera would be <laughs> in your next yeah. bottle of wine. <laughs> but uh, it worked out great. So, so, so yeah. So the way this works, so Juice Link, what they sell you is this little end piece. This little. Let me let me turn this a little bit. I don't know if you can see. There's an end bar here, and there's some legs. These are optional. These legs, because usually you mount this on a tripod, but you can also just have it on these little rubber feet. Right. Um, and then they also sell you this trolley thing, um, nothing above the trolley, this black plate here, and basically these wheels, and it creates a little trolley that rolls on the rails. Now, the rails are, um, I can't remember the exact dimension, uh, but they're steel bars. They're heavy they're, aren't they and solid. Steel? Stainless steel bars. They're solid and heavy, and you order them. It, they give you a place, you can get them anywhere you want, but they're hard to find, actually, but there's a place called Online Metals. Uh, where you can buy them, and it's basically an OEM. So you're buying the, the metal straight from the metal shop. And you can buy them up to eight feet long. Well, how long okay. is this one? Well, I cut this to five. I shouldn't say I cut it. I found a place to cut it for me, because it's wow. not right. anybody will cut solid steel bars like this. But I found a metal shop to cut them. I, I did it at eight feet, but eight feet is, um, number one, it's hard to do a smooth move for eight feet. Mm -hmm. And number two, it, it loses a little bit of um, stability when it's that long. Yeah, so, so you get a little a wiggle. Little, 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 yeah. Right. And number three, it won't fit my car. <laughs> Most practical reason yeah. of all. Yeah, so cutting it to five feet is much longer, like the, the Philip Bloom slider is three feet, which is right. nice, but a five foot slider gives you a lot of room. And you may only use a couple feet of it, but it lets you do a nice, and you can see how smoothly uh, that's, this that's moves. really, really nice. Now there's a few more pieces you need that, are, that, are, that are, aren't part of it. So this is a ball head. Let me actually take the camera off here so you can, uh, uh, let me take off the camera this way. 
I'll take it off like this, okay? Hold that. So, thank you. So this ball head, I just bought a used one at a, um, a camera store. And it's just a ball head. You can buy smaller ones that are less expensive, but this was used, it wasn't too bad. It has a bubble, which is That's really nice. That's the thing, nice. it's got a level on there, so you can always level off, no matter what's going on. Because usually you've got these two ends mounted a tripod, and there's, there's holes to mount them, uh, standard, you know, threaded for, for a tripod mount. And then you've got this guy. And I did add one more element because, um, let me actually put this back on here again. This clips on and there's one more element I added because there's a little bit of a problem you can run into if you change the lens. Now with this ball head, you can point this in any direction, right? So you can shoot something way up, have some nice cloud shots, anything you want. A little hard to see the screen, so you might attach a monitor. But you can basically level it and put it wherever you want and then lock that down. But the problem is, if you've got a long lens on this, right, right. that's sticking way out, it's going to start to weigh the camera forward, and yeah. that can really kind of have it dip a little bit. So what I did is got an, an extra Manfrotto plate on here. Let me just loosen it up. So it's on a plate that you can adjust uh, where the camera sits with respect to the rails. So if you've got a longer lens on it, you can move the camera changing back. Changing the center of gravity. Changing the center of gravity to be right over the axis of this ball head, exactly, and then you can tighten it down. So you've basically got a lot of flexibility on how the camera moves back and forth for center of gravity, and then you can shift it around here, and then you can also just loosen up the ball head if you wanted, let's say you wanted the camera to shoot you know, Although this way. With a wide angle lens, you're going to get. You, yeah, track. you're going to see the track if it's a wide angle lens. But you, for a longer lens, you could do this or set it off to the side a little bit and do a shot like that. So, really flexible, ouch, and easy to hurt your fingers. Mm -hmm. um, one of the most important things I found <laughs> rubber band. Um, <laughs> when you're not using this and the camera's off of it, if you just literally, a simple rubber band will allow you to kind of keep it from sliding all over the place. So when you're moving it around, you pick one end up, it doesn't start flying. Bashing, bashing into your hand. Yeah, that's bashing right. into your hand and, and causing some injury. So that's one of the most important points. And actually on the Juice Link site, he mentions this. So he's got a bunch of little videos. And he sells rubber bands for $10 each. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So, you know, that just a great, great tool. And oh, and so cost. Um, yes, cost. You know, the sliders that you buy that are made are... are Thou they started about $1,000. $1,000, 1200 bucks. Yes. Yeah. So this complete, um, you know, the, 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 the juice link parts were about 200 bucks. The rails were about 60 bucks a piece or so, plus shipping. Uh, this ball head cost me maybe 50 bucks, and then I had to spend about 50 on this plate. Now, you might already have some that works for you. So everything here was under 500 out the door, right. tax, but, but it, shipping, everything. But people might have a lot of this already, right. so they may be down right. to like 250 bucks with the, right. the rails and the... Yeah, so somewhere 250 to 500, depending on what you need. And of course, you need two tripods, so that's one thing. But I had, um, I had my good video tripod and had a cheap camera tripod from a long time ago, which was fine for this. Right. The only thing you got to watch out is you get some torque. Yeah, thank you for... When you mount this on your tripod plate, there's some real torque on the tripod, so you need to make sure those tripods are balanced. Uh, you can knock them over. It's it's hard as a one-person operation to do this, although I did it. I was yeah. carrying all this oh, with, no. with two tripods, um, but it's it's definitely more of a, of a two-person setup. Excellent. So, a uh, great way to get good shots for editing in, uh, in Final Cut Pro. I'll let this play just in case they want to show some of these shots and cut to them while we're talking. So, there you go. A little bit of uh, uh, production wisdom and uh, saving uh, some, some money to build your own dolly. And uh, if you're uh, watching this, you can build your own and have some awesome shots. Thanks for watching MacBreak Studio. RippleTraining.com.